Welcome everybody to our BNI Talks webinar. My name is Steve Chinuzo, your host, and today I've got my pal Tina McNeil O'Brien. Uh, she has been uh, in BNI uh, a long time. She's been a director. She's been a great member. She's got lots of great advice to impart uh, for you. Uh, I know a lot of people have been asking about this webinar. Uh, this was one of our top uh, requested. Uh, where do we find people? How do we invite people? So that's what we're talking about today. So before awesome. we jump into it, Tina, why don't you do a little bit of an overview? Absolutely. I am Tina McNeil O'Brien. I am the owner and broker of the McNeil O'Brien Team Real Estate here in Oak Park, Michigan. I've been in BNI, I believe, 13 years. Um, I actually always need my right hand, left hand person who is on this webinar. I saw you, Kim Wag Bailey, giving you a shout out. Um, and um, I found really um, early in my BNI career some ways to invite, um, and it's something that I kind of train all over um, because it's not just inviting to BNI, it's also inviting to any speaking engagements or anything else that you do out there in the world. And I'm pretty sure I can find a a, a script and and some things that make people comfortable because inviting is not necessarily the easiest thing um, in BNI. And we know that the more we invite, the more we grow our chapters and the more money um, and relationship building that we have. So really important. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a good point that you bring up. I think, you know, we when we talk about the power of one, we talk about all the things that we do weekly and then bring a visitor is once a month because it's not that easy to do. There are some people who are, I don't know how, they're like magic. Pretty much every week they've got people in the room. I'm not that person. I had to work for my visitors. And uh, I think that this is a good opportunity for us to kind of take a good look at how we've been doing in our chapters now and what we can do in the future just to be better at inviting. Absolutely. And I always say, Hey, Steve, if I can make inviting easier for you, then I've done my job. So hopefully there'll be some really good tidbits for people mm -hmm. um, during this webinar to make it just a little bit easier to um, invite um, and talk about how to invite and whom to invite. So it's great. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we always say our best ideas always come from our members. So if you've got a, a great idea or if you want to comment on some, one of the topics we've got, Throw it right in the chat. And again, if you've got a question, put it right in the Q&A. Absolutely. Right, let's get to it. First, I'd like to do a little poll. Let's do if it. If you don't mind, here's our question. I want to know how you're inviting. When's the last time you brought someone? And remember, these are anonymous, so please feel free to tell us the truth. Yeah. Oh, those of you who are driving around or cancel your screen, your options are, uh, when was the last time you wrote a visitor to your chapter? Uh, is it this month? Is it the past 60 days, the past six months, the past 12 months? Or are you new to BNI and haven't brought one yet? All are okay to, to, to choose. You know, sometimes people like, they feel guilty. Uh, but you know what? I, I've had times, Tina, where I've gone I don't know, a, a few months without bringing a visitor because you know what? I'm in the meeting and I'm passing referrals and everything's going. Then I'm like, sometimes I'm like, you need to be reminded. Like, hey, you know, you haven't brought a visitor in a while. You really should focus on that next. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, and the pressure of not inviting is more so, I think, than the pressure of actually inviting itself, right? When you get into a lull. And so hopefully I'll give folks some ideas today to get them out of that rut, to get them out of the um, lull. They're in the world. Ah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, there, I get it. Uh, folks, there is a second untitled question in here for some reason uh, with choices, and you're going to have to choose choice one and choice two to uh, to complete your poll, apparently. So just uh, don't worry about that. Just click anything and uh, that'll be fine. But we'll keep this up for another 10 seconds, and then we will see how everyone has been inviting. I will say this, um, we have had more visitors to BNI uh, in 2023 uh, per month than any other time in BNI. Now, this is worldwide. And I think, I mean, maybe I'm crazy, but people have been cooped up for so long during the pandemic that this is like the year where people are just getting out again. Absolutely. Which is nice. 
All right, let's end this poll and share the results. Yeah, show me those numbers. Let's see. All right. Pretty uh, across the board. So I am impressed. But of course, this is always, we always have a great crowd that comes on, right? This is like the cream of the crop. So naturally, 30% people already brought someone this month. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, past 60 days, 26%. So, and past six, so in the past six months, what is that? 30, 50, 70, almost 80%, right? Um, mm -hmm. Of people have brought uh, a visitor. That is great. And I think that's the kind of thing we need to, uh, to focus on is, you know, what's our commitment to our chapter and to our network itself, rather than just the, you know, the individual stuff. It's like, what are we giving to the chapter? And we always say, bring a visitor. That's like a referral to the whole chapter, right? Because you never know who's going to come in and who's going to refer to whom. Exactly. All right. So we've got some pretty good inviters here. We've only got uh, 15 people are new to BNI. So hopefully new people, you'll pick up some tips uh, and you can raise your inviting game. Absolutely. All right. So let's start look at, at a few different ways for you to invite. Let's start with a typical visitor day. Absolutely. Right. So Tina, why don't you talk about, you know, what typically happens there? So in a visitor's day, depending on, um, because I know we have a lot of different um, chapter types, right? There's some that are in-person and there's some that are online and there's some that are um, hybrid, but this is an awesome opportunity for you to get a number of people in um, at one time in one place. The great thing about it is um, when your chapter's all rowing together and inviting, that's usually when you get into a little bit of a competition mode. So if you have six painters in the room, you know that you're not only going to be able to pick the creme de la creme, but you also are going to have more applications submitted because they want to take advantage of um, the opportunity of BNI. And as entrepreneurs, um, we have a lot of FOMO, right? The fear of missing out. So we like to get picked. Um, I like to tell everyone my story that I am a visitor's day product. And as a real estate broker, you know that is one of the coveted positions in the firm, right? So it's, you know, financial advisors, insurance at PNC, realtors and mortgage loan originators that are kind of that core of the group. And so I came in on a visitor's day and there were four other real estate agents in um the uh, room at that time. And so you just need to really kind of invite strategically, yet also invite as many people um, as you can, because we know that the more that you invite, really the less that will attend, right? So if you invite 40 people, we know that by the time it gets down to it, you'll probably have a solid 10 people in the room. And that, um, is kind of cyclical because not all of them will apply. Some of them will apply and you'll end up with a smaller aggregate number. Um, I also tell people that things that they should look for when inviting to visitors day is look at your chapter traffic lights. So you know your conversion number. So you know how many visitors it takes to then convert that number to a mem uh, into a member. It's usually about 10 to one. So it means that you have to have 10 people um, visit your chapter in order to get one new application for consideration. So once you know that number, you really have a good viewpoint of what you will need to invite to get to your goals um, in that world. So really yeah. first start in your contact sphere. Um, I know I talk about the Dunbar number a lot when talking, when we have visitors days um, in my home chapter. Um, and we talk about those people who you can really count on, those top five people that you can count on, which I always say the five people that you can call at any time and have them come and bring a tarp and rope and a shovel. And they won't ask you any questions, right? They'll just show up <laughs> because you have asked them kind of that favor. And I'll talk more about that in favor inviting when we get to the get to that slide. And then you have the 10 people who you can ask to bring the same things, but they're going to want to ask some questions, right? They're going to want to say, okay, can we eat first? Can, wh what happened? And, and that, but they will still show up for you. And then you have that larger scale, which is about 50 people who you see and work with often, 
but might not be able to show up as quickly as that kind of top 15. And we always want access to that top 15, not only in referrals, but also in the inviting world as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's uh, really, that's the kind of the strategy behind it. Don't just say, well, let's just have a visitor's day and hope that people are going to show up, but really look at things like your conversion rate. And if you don't know what that is, that's something to figure out. It's different in every chapter. Some Absolutely. people, some chapters are uh, have a much better uh, success rate uh, than others. And that's fine. Whatever it is, it is. But make sure that you're inviting properly to make sure that you're going to get uh, the results that you want. Absolutely. There is one other thing that's kind of um, a hidden gem here, and that is your launch anniversary. Every chapter um, has a, a launch date, whatever that date was when your chapter started. However many years ago, we've got all of those dates in there. Talk to your director or success coach uh, who can help you uh, find out when that date is and have another event that's not a visitor's day, but it's kind of like a, but it is at the same time, uh, a big, you know, a celebration of the chapter. We have some chapters that have been around since the 80s. So, you know, how big a deal would that be to have like a 30th anniversary or whatever uh, for that? And so to do a launch anniversary, uh, you don't have to necessarily, by the way, there are some chapters, let's say a chapter open at the end of the year on like December 31st, you don't want to have it that day. It doesn't matter when you have it, but keep it consistent every year and pick a time when you think that would get the most people to come to your event, whenever that is. So Steve, that's a, a great point. So um, my chapter meets on a Wednesday mm -hmm. and we have traditionally as a boost because our numbers were really low. When I um, first got into our chapter, we had six members. So this is to all the people who have smaller chapters who think it can't happen, right? Mm -hmm. So we had six members and the day before Thanksgiving, we always do a large visitor's day. Mm -hmm. That year we did kind of like a, um, a potluck um, and now we call it business builders breakfast at this point. And we do it every year, the day before Thanksgiving, because when we did it that first year, we had 23 visitors with six members. We were able, we ha actually had more visitors than we actually had members at that time because people are out of work usually on that Wednesday. And then they can kind of concentrate on working in their business and coming to an event. And so that has been kind of like our anniversary because it was our rebirth where we went from like the six to the 30 um, because of that launch. So if there's some special times, if you meet on a Wednesday, instead of like calling it for the holiday, meet for the holiday, right? Because people, you have more access to people at that time. Yeah. And by the way, when you do an anniversary event like that, telling a story like that, especially if you've still got those members who are in the original six, and now the chapter is larger and thriving, it's really an amazing thing to do and a good opportunity to do some recognition right in the meeting. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we have about half of those members still left. So yeah, good. it's great. All right. Trade shows and expos. Tis the season. It is. Uh, tis the season. Yeah. And I think um, well, I've got a little siren outside. Um, if you have ever done one of these before, the one thing that you know that everyone uh, who is here and showing uh, something at the expo is in need of customers and has spent a lot of money uh, renting a booth, trying to get new customers. So this is a great opportunity for you to meet some people at these shows and invite them to your chapter. Yes. Tina, have you had any luck? Have you done this before? So here's uh, another thing. So one of my favorite core values is traditions plus innovations. Mm. So our chapter actually did a BNI. We actually did a booth, a BNI booth. And we did it the summer before Ogafeld was um it was was um passed in the in the Supreme Court. So we went to a wedding expo during that time frame, and we had a BNI table mm -hmm. and people stopped by. We ended up getting about five new members from that group because wow. we were we had a present. So I always say friends don't let friends network alone. Mm -hmm. And this was a great opportunity for BNI to um, just get out there and spread the word because a lot of people who are at trade shows are looking for a way to make more money and to get more exposure. 
And what a better way to do that than being part of the world's largest networking organization. So um, if you're not going to do a booth yourself and you're going to go to the trade show, go en masse and, and, and target those areas. Great opportunity to increase your trades, great opportunity to in, increase your wedding mafia, great opportunities um, at these trade shows to just educate and to get invites to BNI. Yeah, I love it when you go, uh, let's say you're, you're looking, you're going to a, um, a trade show for trades, that is, and you're trying to find those people who do home improvements and all those other things. And you find somebody at the trade show who says, yeah, I'll definitely go to your chapter meeting. It's so great as you're going around the room to say to the next booth to say, hey, see that guy over there, he's coming to our meeting next week. You know, you don't want to miss it. And it's kind of a momentum thing and, uh, Absolutely. Really and, and, and do uh, some good stuff for you. All right, let's see what's up next. Uh, social media. So there's lots to talk about with social, right? Uh, one thing I did wanna talk about are community pages. Um, you can set up a non-BNI page like this group did, uh, Seaport Business Builders, or what is that? Seaport Business Networkers, sorry. And uh, this is in Boston. And this was uh, a group that was forming a BNI chapter but they decided before they wanted to uh, start inviting for the chapter, they set this group up and it was just people talking about business and some people were promoting their business on there, whatever. And then at some point when they had a decent amount of people, I think when they had like 60 or 70 people on there, they uh, said, hey, we are gonna start a BNI chapter. If anyone is interested, please come to this meeting on this date. And so many people showed up that on their first day, they had enough applications to get the chapter started. That's a pretty cool deal. And that's the kind of thing that uh, you may wanna try. It's kind of like, you know what? It's very low key to get to know people rather than coming at them with, hey, we're starting a BNI chapter um, and, uh, and, and can work really well. Absolutely. And social media is here to stay, whether you, know, you embrace it or you don't. I like to tell people, pick a platform or two and kind of stick to it. But um, where I get a lot of my invite ideas is when one of your friends says, um, does anyone know a reputable ex? Mm -hmm. So of course, BNI members usually put their BNI chapter members in there. But right. then there's a lot of extra, right? There's a lot of extra where people have made recommendations and that's an awesome pool for you to be able to invite. Um, yeah. I do a lot of inviting, not only here in um, Michigan, but I also do a lot of inviting in Tennessee where um, I have a large family community and they're always asking, hey, how do you, do you know of a person who does X? Um, and it helps me as well when I see that they're looking for a specific vendor, I will reach out and I will call those other vendors, even in Tennessee, um, and tell them about BNI and see if I can get them invited to a chapter once I find out their locations. Um, also, it just really opens up the world to be able to be more accessible in more places. Yeah, it's one of my favorite things to do on Facebook is to ask that question, who do you know who's a great whatever, you know, plumber, attorney, whatever it is, and they put the names in there. And then when you contact that person, you say, so we have a mutual friend and she says that you are the best at what you do and we would love to have you come to our meeting. So it's a little bit warmer than a cold call. Absolutely. Uh, worked out really well. Uh, Brian says, uh, we started a meetup page uh, advertising our meeting and it works really well. And mm -hmm. Craig says, Chambers of Commerce, I work well for, you, for him too. And that's good. Don't talk about that yet because we're going to get a slide into that in a second. Right. Uh, all right. So let's see, but you know, lots of other uh, ways of using social media, using LinkedIn uh, is great for inviting as well. You can really use the search uh, features to, to narrow down the, the professions you're looking for. So I uh, definitely get uh, in the habit of, of putting it out there on social. Yes, Craig, I also agree about picking up business cards. I love that. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Uh, all right, so networking events going two by two. What does that mean? So you're going to pair up with someone in your chapter and go to an after hours event, a chamber event, any kind of event that is not a BNI event. 
and start meeting people with the intention of bringing people into BNI, right? Um, because everyone who's attending a networking event, guess what they want to do? They're trying to promote their business. And not everyone is in BNI, so it's a good time to do it. So if you can make the, the hard sacrifice of saying, my goal is not to be there to promote my business all night, but to invite to BNI to build my network, you can get some really great results. Absolutely. And you, you, know, you alluded to this uh, when we were talking about trade shows, this kind of practice. Right. So one of the things um, when you go to the smaller networking events or even in chamber, it's always for me a focus to get them to the BNI meeting because then I can talk about my business and they can hear me talk about my business. So mm -hmm. I don't do it in this environment mm -hmm. and people, because they don't know about networking are kind of geared to sell themselves. Right. Um, one of the things that I always ask in these smaller um, groups, chambers, or um, you know, mastermind groups is how are you networking? That's really my go-to questions. How are you networking? Um, even when some of the responses on some of the networking platforms like Alignable, I get a lot of people to come to my BNI meeting from Alignable. They'll reach out, make that contact. And one of the first things that I'll ask them, other than how's business going, because I want to get that temperature, but I'll also ask them, how are you networking? Yeah. Yeah. I and nine times out of 10, they're not. <laughs> well, yeah, it's it's kind of like, you know, when you say to people, what's your business plan? And they're like, well, you know, because um, there is everyone is so in the day to day that they don't look at the, the long term. And it's similar to networking, you know, um, mm -hmm. either you've got something that's working or you're just kind of showing up whenever you can. Right. So uh, Anne says we invited our chamber of, is that the next one? I hope I didn't bury this one all the way at the end. Where's chamber? There we are. Good. Uh, so Anne says we invited our chamber of commerce to join our chapter. Uh, they've gained so many new members from BNI that they are sold on renewing. They also bring us lots of visitors. I love this. This is one of the best, coolest things that I've ever seen in BNI is uh, we had a chapter here in Marlboro, uh, Massachusetts, still do. Um, and we had, uh, in the early days of the chapter, uh, we invited the local uh, Chamber of Commerce to join as a member. And there was this amazing kind of open door policy that you know, you're know you a member in both uh, BNI and in the chamber, and there were representatives on both sides and they were doing joint events together. And it was really building both groups really, really well. And it lasted for years and years until uh, the person uh, who was our, was the president of the chamber retired. She was in the chapter for at least 20 years. And the chapter grew to over 70 members. That is a cool thing. If you can get what Anne's got going on in her chapter, do that, reach out. Um, there is the URL for the US chamber uh, for all of the chambers in the United States and you can find uh, chambers everywhere. And now that we are, we have some uh, chapters that are virtual that are finding people you know, in nearby states that are interested. I would reach out to as many people as I can. If they can't get into your chapter, I'm sure they can find a chapter that they can uh, join. Absolutely, Chamber of Commerce are a great resource. And some chambers actually have their own type of networking organizations like a BNG type of group, mm -hmm. but they find better success in the world of um, BNI. And so we have a lot of converted members who were in a chamber BNG group and then left the BNG group to come to BNI just because of the structure and the consistency of referrals. Mm -hmm. So chamber is a great place. They meet all the new businesses and they have relationships with all of the seasoned businesses. So definitely do those chamber events and reach out to the chamber. Yeah. Um, all right. I got this one as kind of an anonymous. So let's just say someone said um, that uh, one of the chambers asked uh, them not to mention BNI. Um, and that happens sometimes because there are some chambers within that chamber that have a referral component that happens. So they look at it as competition. It's not, it doesn't always happen, but sometimes it does. You have to respect it. Um, mm -hmm. but as this member said, uh, you know, they moved on and invited a different chamber. So that's the way Absolutely. it goes. You know, if it's Absolutely. Work out, there's always another chamber around the corner. Always. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay. Let's see what's next. Ah, okay. So Ready? Oh, marketing people, marketing people who love, uh, having a big, robust 
sphere that's kind of split in two. It's kind of like business marketing, and then it's kind of events that they've got. If you want to build up your event sphere, your wedding sphere, uh, go to The Knot. This was suggested by Claudia Thompson, who said she gets a lot of people when she's starting new chapters um, to uh, reach out to these types of sites where you can, and you can see that drop down of all of these uh, vendors. Wouldn't it be amazing to have all of these people in your chapter? Absolutely. And the knot is is a is a wealth of knowledge. And especially when we get also into the trade show world, because they're usually advertised here. Mm -hmm. So you can really get all of the things that you need. And the people that they know just make it bigger. So if you can really get the wedding photographer, or the wedding videographer in your chapter, then all of the other stuff comes usually with it, right? Your seamstress, your dance lessons, uh, your travel advisor. So um, one person from the wedding context sphere makes it so much easier to really build this dynamic team. Absolutely. Uh, we had something similar to that uh, in a chapter where they brought in a DJ. And the initial thought was, I don't know if this guy's going to get that many referrals. And then the DJ started building his own sphere within the sphere, like a power team. Mm -hmm. uh, and then suddenly it just grew. And so, I mean, that's the kind of thing you have to do. You have to really look at your contact spheres and break them down to say, is this going to work well for everybody? Or who do we need to add uh, just to make this uh, power team get stronger and stronger? Exactly. And also a great opportunity for you to, um, I am a proponent of Tiffany Kellogg's invite to your feature presentation. Mm -hmm. So if you invite one DJ or one videographer, someone in the chapter does know another videographer. And if you can get them there at the same time, you automatically will get a new member because yeah. both most likely will apply. Definitely. And I love, by the way, we're getting some suggestions in the chat, Angie.com and Gig Salad. And I've even heard of that one. Gig Salad mm -hmm. for entertainers. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Dan says he's got a mobile DJ in his group and he does really well. So that's fantastic. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Who's up next? Ah, this is house.com. A similar thing, but this is for you know construction, remodeling, all those trades that you want. Um, this is a great place to find people who are really good at what they do and, uh, and invite them to your chapter. Also, TaskRabbit is another really great one, too, yep. for this type of thing. Yep, absolutely. All of those people are looking for more work. So we want to make sure that we're using all those lists, whether it's one of these or LinkedIn or whatever, that where people are on there and they are just trying to uh, find work. Bring them into B&I. Right. Okay. Uh, Craig says we attract visitors through Eventbrite. A lot of people who don't know what BNI is are simply looking for networking events. Agreed. Uh, totally. Hundred okay. percent. And I don't know, I, Tina. I don't know that you, you need to necessarily lead with BNI. You can just say big event. Come on over. Absolutely. Check it out. Um, and you know, it's not done in a nefarious way. I just think that people are people when they hear BNI, and I know a lot of you. I'm sure when you invite have like, how much is it? What's the commitment? All this stuff before they even see a meeting. And what's important is to get the people in the room first so that you don't, you don't have to prove yourself before anything even starts. You can say, all right, you've seen what we do. Does this work for you? And if it does, um, you know, then it makes sense to move forward with an application and see if it's a good fit, right? Absolutely. I also um, use Nextdoor for events as well. Yeah, I love Nextdoor. Yeah, mm -hmm. very popular um, these days. Um, uh, Jennifer says, am I missing something? Are these pages formed in BNI? These pages. Uh, I'm not sure. I thought we were talking, are you talking about social? I'm not sure. I need more clarification on that question. Uh, okay, so Craig says, uh, say you want to grow your business, right? I want to introduce you to 25 other business professionals that are willing to provide referrals. That's great. Nice. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, I see. Uh, are they, Oh, all right. So yes. So these are uh, just resources for you to look for, Jennifer, uh, for House or The Knot or, you know, Angie's List or whatever. Well, it's just Angie.com now. Um, just to, to, to seek out those people and then invite them to your chapter. 
All right. What's next? What's next? Ooh. Oh, all right. So now let's, now that we've got a lot of different places to find people, I'm going to turn this one over to Tina. This is her, her specialty. So I'll let you take it away. Awesome. Like that song on TikTok. Let's get to the good part. Yeah. Um, absolutely. So in the world of inviting, there is a lot of emotional, psychological, and physical things that happen in the world of inviting. And I find that the easiest way to invite, and I'm also talking visitors and guests, because mm -hmm. guests, when they come into the chapter, also provide revenue for the other members of the chapter, and they end up um, you, you know, spending about $1,500 per chapter. So a visitor and a guest, a visitor has the opportunity to join the chapter and a guest um, is not going to be able to join the chapter, say there's somebody's mom or um, that's not in, in a business or a retiree, they still have the opportunity to do that and also gives you an opportunity to have some folks to sub for you hmm. um, when you are going to go on vacation, things like that. So I always find that if you ask, can you do me a favor? You get a better response to that because people want to please other people that they're close to, mm. right? They don't want to let them down. Yep. And so I have a little script I, you know, that I've been doing for years to invite, which is, hey, Steve, can you do me a favor? It's not money, but it is fun, right? So I have a little dialogue around that. And then people are intrigued. What, what do you need? And then I ask them to come and support me. Can you come and support me on X day at X time? I'm the feature presentation speaker. Or um, I think it would be an advantage for you to hear, you know, Steve talk about X. I've heard you mention X. So the favor is really them coming into the meeting in whatever process. Mm -hmm. I'm in a chapter that's hybrid. And so my conversation is, hey, Steve, can you do me a favor? It's not money. Don't worry about it. Um, but I'd love to have you come in and represent. I'm giving a feature presentation, which is titled X. And we meet online. So pants are optional. And then they're usually intrigued to see what's happening. I'm like a quick hour and a half before your day gets started. I would love if you could do that. And it really does very well when you ask people for a favor. This even goes for if you do need a substitute. Hey, I need a favor. I'm going on vacation in four weeks and my business is very important. Can you help me still have a presence there while I'm on vacation? So I still can make money while I'm on vacation. And so people really want to help. And that's because of that art of reciprocity, right? Mm -hmm. The art of reciprocity is if you do something for me, there is a gain for you in return. And we've all gotten these stickers at the end of the year, right? They come in the mail and they have your name. They have your address on them. They're usually really cute stickers right about the time you're about to do holiday cards. Mm -hmm. And it says, here are complimentary stickers for you. If you would like, you can donate $5, $10, $20. And then they leave an other because they're letting you determine what are these stickers actually worth for you. It is that push-pull relationship. So if I help you do this, which is send your holiday cards with these cute stickers, well, address labels, I will therefore hope that you would provide some monetary donation to the organization for that. And it is that, that will you do me a favor? And that is what we do in BNI, our request for referral every week when we do our weekly presentation or our request for referral when we do our feature presentation is that art of recipro reciprocity. Or, as I like to say, the power of the solid, because we are asking our members every week, will you just do me a solid? Mm -hmm. And the power of the solid is if you say, yes, you'll do the solid and you don't do it, there is some fundamental curse and or feelings when you don't do the solid. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm referencing the regular show because they have an entire episode of will you do me a solid and what happens if you don't 
do the solid that you have agreed to. Mm -hmm. So it is that first I help you and then you can help me, which is the, you know, one of our core values of that giver's gain. The more that you give, the more you will receive. Um, But it also has in that world that givers can gain. So remember that you do give something willingly and from the heart, but you do have the opportunity to get something back in return. And so that is that favor inviting. And it every time you invite someone, it is really a favor, right? They're doing you a favor by coming into the chapter and you're doing them a favor by exposing them to BNI and the opportunity for them to grow their business and achieve their goals. All right. I did not want to jump in and, and interrupt your stream of thought because <laughs> that was a gem you just gave us. Um, but you did early on when we were talking about favor inviting, you mentioned something that is so important to me that was kind of like a revelation for me with inviting. And that is to invite to meet somebody in the chapter. To say, Absolutely. Come and meet this person as opposed to come to my meeting at 7 a.m. It's a much harder sell. Than Absolutely. To say, That's someone who I think can give you referrals. I'd show up for that every time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And here's the other thing. And some chapters might think it's controversial, but I tell people in my chapter, invite real estate agents. First of all, real estate agents, we love to show up if there's food. Mm -hmm. And we also love to show up to network in itself because we love to talk. I don't consider that competition because in my chapter at one time, we had three residential real estate agents in our chapter at one time, and we all did something different, right? Um, we all had different areas, different expertise levels. We've had two financial advisors, two mortgage loan originators, um, in our chapter. So I know it's really controversial for people who are like, oh, but I hold that space, but my title guy cannot live on just my business, Mm -hmm. right? He needs to meet other real estate agents. And so if you say, hey, I'd love you to come into my chapter as a favor, I'd love to invite you to the real estate power team, which is the title, the realtor, the home inspector, the painter, all of those, then that becomes business for my chapter members. And that is that art of reciprocity, right? That givers gain. So yes, absolutely. By the way, we have two people who are asking for a copy of that favorite inviting script. Oh, absolutely. I I, I can write it. <laughs> it's in my memory banks as of right yep. now, but yes, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Uh, so let's talk about uh, those two things that we titled this webinar and we're saving them for last. And that is uh, grip and snip. Right. So there's behavioral styles and we all have taken probably a million assessments, right? DISC, Myers-Briggs, FISH, there's a million out there. So the first thing I always tell people is know your behavioral and your personality style and either one of these will work for that style. So if you're a little bit more analytical, if you're a little bit more on the examiner side, nurturer side of um, BNI, I find that grip works really easy as a script for you. Mm-hmm. And that is when you meet an individual at a networking event, at a trade show, you ask them the questions. Are you looking to grow your business? Would referrals help and invite them to where you'd like them to show up and tell them the place where they need to show up? It is a very easy acronym to remember. So you say, hey, Steve, are you looking to grow your business? Steve's like, yes, absolutely. Would more referrals help your business to grow? Well, of course, absolutely. I'd love you to take advantage of a networking meeting to meet more people who can help you do that. And then you invite them to your chapter meeting, that time, that place, that location, whether it's online or in person. It is a very easy script, low key, um, not too much pressure, but it's really organized so that you remember the steps as well as how to say them. But I find that this works very well for those financial advisors, bankers, 
um, people who, um, CPAs, this is a great script to give them as well because they're not going to be so, it's, it's all about the business, right? Mm-hmm. Growing your business, getting the referrals, here is the place and here is the time and the invitation. I would love you to attend that information. Absolutely. I am, on the other hand, I, my, my script works better for the next slide, <laughs> which is SNP. I had SNP. never heard of SNP until you mentioned it. And I'm like, ah, this so, makes sense to me. Let me tell you why this makes sense to me before you get into it. Uh, mm-hmm. I get a lot of feedback from people who visit chapters and tell me why it wasn't a good fit for them. And this is what I see. So go ahead. So first of all, I'd like to give um, credit where credit is due. Kim Wag Bailey introduced me to this philosophy during right before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I I practiced this during the pandemic for life in general. Mm -hmm. Um, This is a way to invite that doesn't even feel like inviting. And it's an invite invitation to anything. So it doesn't necessarily have to be an event. It doesn't necessarily have to be um, a BNI meeting, but I use SNP to just contact people. So I started on my cell phone during the pandemic. I started at A and started at Z and worked this process. So the first thing in SNP is if you, especially if you haven't spoken to this person in a while, or if you even don't know this person, the first thing that I asked is, are you safe? How's everything going? Are you safe? Are you secure? Um, you know, are you keeping your head down during this time frame? Right. And then I asked them, was there anything that they needed, both personal and in business? Because personal sometimes for people, especially um, people who were commissionables and business just stopped, sometimes those needs were some of the things that were in highest demand, paper towels, formula. So making those calls and still helping people through that art of reciprocity was, is there anything that you need in your personal life? Is there anything that you need in your business world? Love this, by the way. This is giver's gain right out of the box. Out of the box. Sentences in and you're already starting with, how can I help? Exactly. Is there anything that you need? How can I help? Um, I find that need is better than help because nine times out of 10, the people who need help, if you use the H word, if Mm. you need help, they'll say, no, 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 everything's fine. But is there anything that you need? Because they're not really thinking of it as a, a charitable thing when you need help. They think of it as a, oh, it is a staple to be able to get something that you need. So, and I asked them, is there anything that you need? Some people needed formula. Some people needed um, everything. Some people were like, I, all my commissions stopped and I don't know how I'm going to keep my lights on. I've been furloughed. So it was really helpful to say, is there anything that you need personal and in business? Mm -hmm. And then to have them take advantage of that, that need. How can you help them with that need? So I had a network, right? I have a network of people all over the world. I've been to conference. I've been everywhere. I have a, a, a network, as Ivan says, that's wide and deep. So I would then say, okay, I'm going to get some people to deliver food items. I'm going to get people to... Um, help you with this. Oh, you're looking to even get out um, to, you know, if they wanted to do an online like game night, if they just needed people interaction, I could do that as well. And that is the invitation I take, you know, to invite them to what you need. So I have someone who can drop off foodstuffs. Are there any food allergies? I have someone who has access to formula and this is the formula that they have. I have people who have access to help your network while it's down. What can I, can I put those people in touch with you or can I have you come to X online meeting or X, you know, they're meeting in the park and everyone's going to be socially distancing. I still practice snip and grip because I haven't gotten through all my contacts 
since the pandemic started. And then you give them the place. These items will be placed on your doorstep or where they're meeting at Micmac Park. You give them all of this. So I always say for the promoter go-getters, they're a little bit more warm and fuzzy. SNP works so well and it's not scripted and it is earnest and honest from the heart. Are you safe? Is there anything that you need? Oh, you would love your business to increase because you're not able to get out and see clients because your business is not considered essential. Well, I'd love you to come to my BNI meeting and meet people who can help you through this transition. Or I'd love, oh, you want more business and you are a notary. I'd love to have you come to my BNI meeting and meet my real estate power team. So, and, and this is where we meet and this is the time. So SNP is near and dear to my heart. And I loved it the moment that I heard it because it is who I am. I am that SNP person. So utilize it for yourself. Utilize it as your own because in BNI, it's always about sharing and caring. So um, try it and it, it will become natural to you to make sure that people are okay. Um, sometimes you never know. The greatest story of you never know is a story of Missy Elliott and Tweet. She um, was a singer songwriter and she wasn't making it in the world of the singing world. And Missy Elliott called her on the phone. What Missy Elliott didn't know is that she was standing on a bridge in Los Angeles and she was done. It was over. And then Missy said, hey, I just, I was thinking about you today. Are you safe? Is everything okay? Uh -huh. And it wasn't. And then that conversation went on and then she had a, um, a song called Truth Hurts that came out that was multi-million dollar and she's still here. She just did um, Missy Elliott's honors um, because she was honored um, through BET. So you never know that that call might be something that someone needs personally or in business. Wow a powerful way to end this presentation for sure. All right, so uh, we've got a couple of questions in q and I was worried that we were gonna run short. I mean, we're gonna have too much time to kill. We're almost out of time, but let's look at a couple of quick questions. And uh, here's Tina's, by the way, contact info if you wanna get in touch. Absolutely, please reach out to me. I am always ready, willing, and able to do one-to-ones with people. Um, I'd like to send a shout out also to Steve, who is in the Waco chapter, who kept me in business during the pandemic because I couldn't see the forest for the trees and he practiced SNP on me. So uh -huh. it's something that works with everyone. Are you safe? Yeah. <laughs> what do you need? So thank you very much. All right. Uh, here's some questions. Uh, first one, how do we invite people to other chapters? I have someone who... Uh, isn't close to our chapter, but I would love to invite them to be and I. Do we put it in the app? Absolutely. Um, um, my background is in the uh, the Macomb Oakland area here. I was part of the director team, and I'm always inviting to other chapters in Tennessee, um, wherever you can do that. Practice one of the um, if you meet a business professional, especially on something like if you're doing any type of um, speed networking through Alignable because they have a lot of groups and things like that. And you'll meet somebody from Texas, invite them to a Texas chapter, do the work, do the due diligence and get them in. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Christine asks, uh, for the ones that you find online, do you call them directly, email or message on social media? Which do you find to be the best way? And how do you even begin that conversation? So this is a cold call. So in a, in a cold call situation, if you didn't know it, I like to talk a little bit. So I'm always a phone call girl. I would have a flip phone if uh, iPhones weren't so fancy. But um, yeah, make the call. Whatever's comfortable to you will come off as the most earnest. If you, on a cold call, it's, it's harder to say no to a person than it is to any type of email or anything that comes in. And I know I get a ton of email that's like, hey, I'm so-and-so, I'd love to have 15 minutes to do blah, 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 blah. That's not enough of a relationship builder. Uh, statistics prove that every two minutes someone gives you on the phone, they will give you another two minutes. So if you can get them on the phone and talk that initial two minutes, 
They'll give you another two minutes and another two minutes until somebody says, you know what, I got to get back to work or whatever. So definitely make the call. I would always, I always say make the call. All right. Um, Angel says, I come from a virtual chapter. Inviting visitors is one thing, but following up to get them to actually show up after they register is another. Do you have any tips? So, yeah. The, so um, there was a podcast in, um, that says the reason why people say that they're going to show up and they don't say that they're going to show up is because the time for them is too expensive. So you have to make the cost analysis for them to make it lucrative for them to show. So I'm always doing a follow-up when they say that they will attend. I will call them like a day or two before and ask them to bring another business professional with them. Because they won't skip if they know, because people don't let people network alone. Mm -hmm. So you take that fear and then they're obligated to make that because they've invited someone else to attend with them. So that's what I usually do so that their time is worth it and it is expense and the expense is worth it to them to work in their business. Yeah, I do love the idea of having a visitor invite someone to go with them. Um, Of course, it doubles the amount of people in the room, but uh, it also dramatically increases their chances of actually showing up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Suzanne had a response um, to the previous question. So she says, if I have someone that wants to join BNI, but their seat is taken in her chapter, she does an email introduction to the support director who is often able to introduce them to another chapter. I think that's always a good way to go. Either Always a good, absolutely. Your director or coach, whoever you have, or um, contact the president of the other chapter. Just open up those lines of communication. Uh, okay, and let's see. I've been in BNI for several years with minimum referrals. Uh, I've given referrals worth thousands. My hesitation with inviting is the cost of BNI, especially with the increase in rates. Oh, how do you overcome the hesitation? Oh my gosh, this is a great question. I love mm-hmm. it. Um, first of all, um, you've been in BNI for several years with minimal referrals. I would love to do a one to one with you. Um, people tend to get stuck in the trees. Um, and realize that they're actually in a forest. So please reach out, whoever the anonymous attendee is, um, to any of my contact information. I'd love to do a one-to-one because I have a million ideas of how you can get more referrals. And it's probably going to start with your weekly presentation and then move to your feature. Um, The the hesitation is um, people buy coach, people buy Prada, but people also buy from Target and from Walmart. The cost versus the return is not the worry. Because if you do everything in this proven system, you will make money. And so don't worry about the price because there's a a lot of reasons that people balk on price, but there's also a lot of ways that you can show them that it is worth the money. So I'd love to have that conversation into detail with whomever that is because I got a lot of um, ideas of how to make that a lot less painful um, when it gets to it. And some closing techniques too for visitor host on what to say when you get to that, show me the money portion of close. So please do. All right, we're gonna wrap up with that because it is 1258. And uh, I just want to say, Tina, thank you so much for coming on. You are one of the smartest people I've known in BNI. There's never a question that can be asked where you don't have the perfect answer every time. Um, And I really appreciate uh, what you bring to the table every time you're on one of these webinars. And I hope you'll come back soon again. Absolutely. And Steve, thank you for having me on today. It is always a pleasure um, to reach more people. And that is what it's all about.